And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome to Open Connection. I'm your host, Robert Picto. Our show today comes to you from the traditional and unceded territory of the Simshan people. You may have heard that experts recommend adults get 150 minutes of moderate activity each week. Swimming is an excellent way to work your entire body and cardiovascular system. An hour of swimming burns almost as many calories as running, with all the impact on your bones and joints. On today's Open Connection, we open our archives to 1992. The Points North Swimming Association is comprised of four swim clubs. The Kitimat Marlins, Terrace Bluebacks, Prince Rupert Rapids, and Masset Eagles. Now these clubs get together to form a single regional team to compete at championship swim meets. For the first time in the history of the Points North and the Canadian Youth National Swim Championships, Points North has qualified eight swimmers to attend Youth Nationals to be held this May in Regina, Saskatchewan. These championships pit the fastest 17 and under boys and the fastest 15 and under girls from across Canada. One of the founding members of Points North is Terrace Bluebacks coach Bill Nash. After spending several years in Kittermat, then in Grand Prairie, Alberta, Nash returned to the Northwest last year. Yeah, it feels really good to be back. I, uh, I hadn't planned on coaching this year. Um, and I got a phone call from Mr. Coxford, and we uh, discussed the possibilities of coming back. And I've always thought that maybe you shouldn't come back from whence you left. And having been in Kittermat and being part of Points North, you associate the Pacific Northwest as being all your home. And uh, so I was a little reticent, but the idea of coming back to something that I had part of developing, that is Points North, I, uh, I was keen on doing that, so we went after it. Points North has never been outstanding. Now that you're back, it's, it's like it's, it's changed. What have you brought to it? Well, I don't know that I brought very much. Maybe I was uh, the, the catalyst to um, getting people a little more excited. The, the chemistry's always been here. Uh, they've always had great swimmers here. And it goes back not just when in the, in the last five years, I mean 10 or 12 years, as far back as I can remember, there have always been great swimmers. Um, Don Pasacrita and Eugene Giorfi. Uh, uh, years ago when I was swimming, a man by the name of E.B., Gord E.B., was a great swimmer out of Prince Rupert. And now his daughter's swimming. So there's always been great swimmers here. I think it was just a question of somebody saying, we should organize them a little better and try and do things together a little more so. But the coaching has always been here. There's, there are very talented coaches. Uh, uh, Don First in, in Masset is an incredibly talented coach. He's indeed the senior coach in our region right now. And uh, Red Shaw in, in Kitimat uh, has got a wealth of experience, not just as a swimmer, but as a coach in BC. And now with uh, Mike Flagel uh, out of uh, Prince Rupert, uh, bringing some of his expertise, uh, particularly in the distance events, um, I mean, we're very well balanced. I think we're a threat no matter where we go now. Um, I'm probably a, a little more focused than a lot of people would like me to be. I'm very, very driven. And I necessarily make everybody else be driven too. I think the kids pick up on it and I think they like it. I think some of uh, the people that, and I mean we're all a team, not just the coaches, not just the swimmers, but the parents and the executive too. I think they tend to feel that I might be a little too fanatical about what I do. But I have a, a mission, so to speak, and I'm going to go as hard as I can uh, with the hopes that everybody can stay with me. And we reach the stars, great. If we don't, maybe we'll land on the moon. But either way, we're going to shake up the boys in the lower mainland. A prime example of the success Points North has experienced over the past season happened about a month ago. Sixteen swimmers, five from Prince Rupert, three from Kitimat, and eight from Terrace attended the Provincial Age Group Swimming Championships in Victoria. There were over 360 swimmers from 32 clubs across the province taking part. Points North placed first in the medium club division, but even more impressive, second overall. I was pretty happy, there's no doubt about that. I think the parents that were there cheering us on, and there were some, I think they were far happier than I was. And that's great, that's what it's supposed to be all about. I remember having a conference call. We communicate quite often in that fashion uh, between the 
the regional director, Mr. Stamhuse, and the other coaches, and we discussed the possibilities of, of um, you know, how well we're going to do. And uh, for the most part, I think the consensus was, well, if we make the top five, we'll have done very well. Uh, in the back of my mind, I kept on saying, my God, that's pretty conservative. Uh, I had a feeling that we would, um, we would shake up a lot of people, and uh, that's exactly what we did. We won the, the medium-sized team, and uh, we were second in the overall points, and I think if maybe we had had one or two more swimmers um, to fulfill the needs for relays, um, I think we might have won it. I truly believe we could have won that meet. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Thank you for staying with us. Some people who enjoy swimming want to take it to a competitive level. This can provide health benefits of a vigorous workout as well as fun and the thrill of competition. Let us return their archives as Christian Eby shares about the importance of competition. The next big challenge for the club will be the Youth Nationals. Qualifying from the Rapids is 13-year-old John Stamhuse, 12-year-old Kirsten Eby, and 13-year-old Amanda Bedard. Now, Eby is the youngest member of this group and a backstroke specialist. She holds the provincial record in the 200-meter backstroke for 11 and 12-year-olds and is ranked in the top three in her age group in Canada. I like going on the swim meets and stuff, but <laughs> the training is kind of boring. So, well, it's not boring. It's just getting up at five in the morning is kind of hard. But when you get into a routine of it, it's not so bad. What about youth nationals? What are you expecting from yourself? Um, well, I want to get nationals and it's uh, my 200 backstroke. So that's sort of what I'm expecting of myself in, in that, because I'm only swimming two races. so. And that's to me. We just train twice a day and do weights three times a week, so that's about it, what we do. Um, we swim about two hours a day, same around there. What about Bill Nash? What does he add to you? Well, I don't usually swim with him, like at practice, but when at the meets, he's, he's there, like before my race and stuff, so they give me comments before my race, tell me what to do. That's right, get your legs going, come on. Very good. You look great, too. The lone marlin and making you, nationals you is 15-year-old Lee Encinas. Encinas has qualified for youth nationals in the 200-meter like breaststroke. He's been one of the top swimmers in the Northwest the past uh, few no, years, qualifying as a finalist <laughs> in several provincial meets. It feels good. People come up to me and they say, you know, they're really proud of me. My parents are really proud of me. My friends come up to me and congratulate me. You know, it feels good trying to become the best in my age group, just uh, be becoming the best that I can be. Have you set any goals for yourself? Yeah, times, I wanna, I wanna get basically like two or three seconds off in each swim that I'm gonna swim there. I don't want anyone my age to beat me. <laughs> Definitely not anyone my age. That's good. You know, you got legs like beer kegs and you don't use them in that freestyle. I can't understand it. When you come off the wall in, free, in freestyle, the first thing you do is get streamlined. The second thing you do is get your legs going. And the third thing you do is get your arms going and then you breathe. Okay? And if you do that properly, if you just do that small little segment properly, it's going to change your personality and you're going to be able to do everything properly eventually. Just start with this one small task. Don't breathe after you push off. The Terrace contingent consists of four 14-year-olds, Corey Holland, Dave Vanderlee, Jocelyn Coxford, and Amy Peacock. Now, Amy's strongest events are the 100-meter and 200-meter breaststroke, where she is nationally ranked for 13- and 14-year-old girls. Um, we're going to taper quite a bit, but f two weeks before the nationals, but um, right now we're just going to, I think, work on the strokes that we're going to swim at youth nationals. And... I don't know. Are you ready for it? Yeah, I'm ready for it. What does Bill Nash give to this club? Lots of experience in coaching. He's, I like him as a coach. He's a very good coach. He's proven that because Allison Bear scale. Um, I don't know, I think he's given us more of a team just in, within Terrace. 
Hope and Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Welcome back to Open Connection. Everyone knows the feeling. It's your first day back after a relaxing vacation and you just can't deal. All the worries you left behind are waiting there for you, but sometimes there are new ones too. Money woes. Let us return to the archives as head coach Bill Nash shares what happened to him when he got back from vacation. And then you come back and you go, I gotta buy some food for, th this is me, okay? I came back to my apartment and of course I don't wanna leave anything in the fridge because it goes a little moldy a little faster. So I come back and open the fridge and there's nothing to eat. And I go to my pocket to find out if I got, and I got no money. No money, nothing to eat. No money, nothing to eat. When's the bank open? 10 o'clock? My God, I'm gonna starve. And then I thought, aha! And I go screaming over to my car, open up the car, pull out the, uh, the ashtray, $2.68, yes! Went screaming down here, bought coffee right away, because that's an important part. A banana and an orange, and a uh, loaf of bread, $2.68. Perfect. But that's what it's like. You're now working on your last little bit of reserves. The important part is to understand that as coaches, we, un we know that this occurs. And we do expect you to feel poorly. But this is also part of your training. If you can't train hard now, you're not going to be able to develop that bank account soon enough. Some of you have to understand that you're going to be going to youth nationals in two months, eight weeks, 73 practices. That's it. Okay. In between then and now, we're going to be having these little holidays off to our swim meet here. Some of us are going up to Ketchikan. By the way, at, at Youth Nationals, we have uh, two young ladies, um, Amanda Bedard, who's 13 in the 13 and 14 year old age group, uh, who's uh, making finals and still a year to go in that age group. So that, uh, that's quite remarkable. Kirsten Eby, who's uh, probably the best backstroker in the nation for 11 and 12 year old girls, um, she's. Uh, She's without a doubt the, the strength of our youth coming up. Uh, those two um, coupled with Amy Peacock, our breaststroker and Jocelyn Coxford or our flyer out of Terrace have uh, put together probably a relay that might make finals at nationals. Now that, that's a big if, but if everything falls in place, if we make finals, we'll have done very, very well. Um, I, I think that we're going to have to have a little luck on our side. I think the kids are beginning to believe in themselves. I think that's more important than the luck. And that's starting to happen. So all things considered, that might happen. The boys, um, I think Corey Holland is potentially a finalist in his specialty as a freestyle sprinter. He's becoming stronger and stronger and feeling better about himself. He's still pretty shy. Uh, I think he still lacks a little bit of uh, confidence when he's dealing with other people, but this guy likes to race better than any person I know outside of maybe myself. I love to race and he does too, and I think that's part of that chemistry. We both latched onto this feeling. Maybe we don't win, but boy, we're gonna shake him up pretty good. Uh, David Vanderley, he's just, well, I, he's 14, and I thought he'd been swimming for years. And just out of conversation, it sort of came up, well, I've only been swimming for a year and a half, and I looked at him sort of like a, a dog getting a needle, you know, like, you're kidding. And he goes, no, I've, I've just started this. So he's come out of nowhere. And I, can, I remember at this past provincial championships overhearing some boys from Victoria talking about this kid, Vanderlea. He just snuck in. He's not a threat at all. Well, at the 100, he was first. He just got tired. We'll fix that. We'll get him fit. And I think he's going to be a threat when he gets there as well. Lee Encinas is the senior member of this whole youth uh, national team coming out of Kitimat. Um, He's got a lot of stability, a lot of maturity, and he brings that strength with him. Um, he's built like an 18-year-old, big, strong boy, and um, he's got a heart as big as his head. And I think, I think he'll lead this team onto great things this year. So, what are the athletes expecting from themselves this May in Regina? Well, I don't think we have a chance of winning the youth nationals, but I think individually, everyone will do pretty good. How about yourself? What do you want? Well, I don't think I'm going to place like, like I know I won't. I know I won't place <laughs> like up top. But um, 
I just spent my best time and that will be happy. I have, but they're rocking right now. I don't know if I can do it because I haven't been swimming that well at big meets, so I think I gotta get feel my confidence more. Open Connection will be right back after these messages. And now, from the CFTK TV studios, this is Open Connection with your host, Robert Picto. Large hoof animals belonging to the deer family, caribou and reindeer, are actually the same species. There are differences between the caribou and reindeer, though. Caribou are native to North America, whereas reindeer are native to Northern Europe and Asia. In this final segment of Open Connection, we return to archives to see some caribou wrestling. We're going to be anywhere in north of where we were on that last one instead of south. Okay, check work. Yeah, check work. A little north. A couple miles, that thing up? Uh, about six. Okay, check. It's a few hundred kilometers northeast of French George, and it's halfway through a day of high country rodeo. The animal they're after is woodland caribou. The would-be cowboy is biologist and net gun specialist Rob Woods of Fort St. John. It's a lot of fun for me. It's enjoyable. You get to see new country and work with new people. And you always learn things from other people, too. So. Helping repack the net is helicopter pilot Bob Batchelor and Maury Wood, the wildlife biologist in charge of the Williston Wildlife Project. We don't know a lot about the populations of caribou up here in the Williston watershed, so this is the first study, the first step that's being taken to gain some information about their migration patterns, uh, their habitat use and selection, and what seasons they use, what types of habitat in. So this is the beginning for us in, up in this watershed. They're high in the Wolverine range, and they're getting ready to capture another caribou. The objective is to net the animal, wrestle it to the ground, and place a radio transmitter around its neck. Armed with his net gun, Rob Woods heads off with his pilot. They must work as a team in order to reduce the stress on the animal and on the two men trying to capture it. Okay, here we go. Yep, going in. Okay, it'll be next, next patch of snow. Okay, guy. Caribou fights to free itself from the net. Rob works quickly to ensure the cow doesn't get away. He steps off the helicopter and goes to work wrestling the three-year-old animal to the ground. With Mari Wood and biologist Chris Ritchie on their way to help, the task is accomplished without too many bruises to Rob or the caribou. It does get a little rough, but uh, in all the years, um, only a few bruises, no cuts, no major breaks or anything, just bruises. So I think it's it's fair on the animals and fair on us too. So uh, try one more. See to ensure no one gets hurt, Rob requests that I take a hands-on approach to this story. Assigned to hold the head, I feel the strength, smell the breath and see the blood sample. Uh, we take two different kinds of blood samples. Uh, from the females, we take one that we analyze for pregnancy uh, so that we can find out whether they will be calving or not. And the other blood sample is for genetic analysis, DNA analysis. That gets sent down to Victoria, and they will later analyze that, uh, compare it to other populations of caribou throughout North America. And that's where they're looking at subspecies and that sort of thing. Once the collar is fitted and the blood's taken, the animal is released. After 10 or so minutes, the episode is over and the animal returns to the wild, tired and puzzled, 
but otherwise okay. We were doing some work back over towards Fort St. John and comparing between uh, other methods of capture for deer and we found that net gun was cheaper and quicker and more selective, um, which surprised us. How about for the animal? How about for the animal? Um, our losses with the net gun are very, very minimal. Um, other forms of capture like drop net, we've never had much problem. Clover traps, we lose the odd one, but it sure beats the drugs hands down for, for animals that you can handle. Caribou is certainly an animal Rob can handle. After 10 years, the total number of animals he's captured is well into the hundreds. And his fifth on this outing is now within his sights. trying to free itself and in the process it slides over an edge and comes to rest a few hundred meters below. We are left only to watch as Rob once again repeats what he's done hundreds of times before. From the hovering helicopter he jumps to the ground and brings the animal under control. I think the more you work with one pilot the better it is and you know the communication thing has to be there. We're always trying to communicate, talk to each other, inform each other what's going on, choose which animal. It makes it a lot easier for everybody because you're not second guessing each other as you're going in on an animal. You, know, you don't want those decisions made or the second guessing going on as you move in on an animal. While this exercise deals only with woodland caribou, it's part of a bigger program to protect and enhance fish and wildlife affected by the Bennett and Peace River dams a program sustained by an $11 million contribution by BC Hydro. The dams resulted in the Williston Reservoir, which stretches close to 200 kilometers along the Rocky Mountain Trench. By radio coloring caribou, data can be collected which will be used to ensure the animal's future. This information, once we gain some more of it, say in another two or three years down the road, hopefully we can use some of that to work together with uh, some of the forestry companies and, and other things that are going on in the watershed and look at some integrated management solutions uh, working together with them. It's hanging up pretty good, eh? Yeah. Almost too good a shot. <laughs> okay, you just got a bit of net on the toe there. Okay, can you... Each of the radio callers transmits on a different frequency. And the caribou can be tracked for up to three years. The majority of the 21 now collared are females, which will allow biologists to locate where they are calving. It's all crucial information if woodland caribou is to be protected from the ever-increasing demand for lumber and hydropower that now encroaches on its habitat. Okay, Murray, Got the blindfold off? Okay. Come on, girl. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Open Connection. The greatest distance in the existence of man is not from here to there, but a connection from his mind and heart. If we can conquer that distance, we can soar like an eagle and realize our immensity within. I'm Robert Pictow.